and I want to show you using Cinebench R20 single thread. There are many ways to assess single thread performance, but Cinebench is a fast and easy tool that you can run at home, and it's one of the 25 workloads that we used to calculate the 19% improvement for Zen 3's instructions per cycle. So Anand Tech has let the cat out of the bag some three weeks early, breaking Intel's so-called embargo that keeps the big tech tubers' mouths tightly closed on their 11th gen CPUs. That was supposed to be the answer to AMD's highly successful Zen 3 5000 series processors. Unfortunately, just as many techies were expecting, Intel's 8 core 14 plus nan nanometer plus 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 CPUs are a big fat fail. If it were a rocket, then it literally would have exploded on launch. Even at stock settings, Intel's Rocket Lake 8 core processors under load run very hot at over 80 degrees Celsius which is not surprising given that they consume an eye-watering 225 watts of power for an 8-core processor. Even worse are spikes to over 290 watts. Eh? How many cores? That's like an RTX 3080 with 8,000 odd cores. Not 8. Compare this against AMD's 5950X with twice the cores that consumes 225 watts so it's no wonder that Intel dropped the core count from 10th gen 8 10 cores to 11th gen 8 cores what about performance how does it compare to Zen 3 as we compare the 11700k to competitors in Cinebench R20 single thread performance well its score is 577 that compares to, for instance, an AMD 5800X at 628, which means worse than AMD performance in gaming. So all the hype that Rocket Lake taking back the gaming crown from AMD does not look like it's going to happen, given instead there is an 8% gap. You know, it was supposed to take away the gaming crown, it's failed. Whilst in multi-thread, the score is 56.31, worse than the 5800X's 5736. What this means is that Intel's best 11th gen, that's the 11900K, won't even come close to matching AMD's 5900X in multi-core performance of 8178 let alone the 5950X Monsters 10380 multi-core Cinebench R20 score. It's as though Intel is producing processors now in 2021 that are competing against AMD Zen 2 2019 processors and not Zen 3. They are that far behind the curve, a whole generation behind AMD and that with worse thermals and power usage, far worse, even than Zen 2. So Intel's 11th gen processors are a big fat fail, where the only thing they have in their advantage is supply or lack of. I Intel can supply the market with many processors, well as many as the market wants, and given the lack of supply from AMD so should be able to shift a significant quantity of these cr rubbish processors which of course depends on price which we won't know until 30th of March when they are actually launched but given the specs that Intel needs to price their processors more cheaply than AMD's i.e. the 1100K should be priced less than the 5900X's $550 maybe around $499 though going by some commentators signs or Intel is going to stick an insane $599 price tag on it so expecting consumers to pay more for a worse product $499 should be the top not $599 it's ridiculous anyway we'll find out in about three weeks time when the um, Bargo is lifted 
Until then, if you are planning on your next system being based on Intel 11th gen processor, then heed my warning or take my advice, which remains to scrap that idea from your mind and go with AMD, where the best all round processor remains the 5900X, though of course the demand for which remains sky high, so yeah. You need to get yourselves onto the suppliers various waiting lists that tend to extend from anywhere from four to nine weeks after you've paid for the item. The bottom line is like is that Intel's Rocket Lake processors are a big fat joke. They run hotter and slower and cost more than AMD Zen 3 processors. You would really need to be desperate to buy one. No Intel Rocket Lake garbage for me. My latest desktop is a 5950X RTX 38 system that will be delivered in a couple of days time. Just going through its final quality control at scan computers before it's dispatched. On the 6th of March is priced at £3,379. I paid £3,000. £235 so it's increased by about 5% in price now I bought it on the 6th of January 2021 and this video is just before the delivery on the 9th of March so these are the specs of my system case Meshify 2 motherboard Asus ROG Strix X570 Gaming Processor, of course, the 5950X. I paid 780, so it's gone down in price by 30 pounds. Cooler, Corsair Hydro, uh, 360 millimeter, which you need for the 5950X. 64 gig RAM, 317 pounds. I paid a lot less. Uh, I think about something like 270 pounds. Graphics card. Of course, it is going to be. Is it? Graphics card is the Asus TOF RTX 3080. 850, I paid 750. So that's the bulk of the price increase over the past two months. Power supply 170. I think it's the same price I paid for it. Um, two solid state drives, NVMe, two Corsair, one terabyte, MP600. The uh, PCIe 4 is <coughs> the motherboard I got, is PCIe 4. Same price as when I paid for them. Operating system is Windows 10 Pro 162. I think I paid about 132 for it. You can get their licenses off eBay anyway for about £30, less than £30. And I think that's it. So that's my system. Uh, also, I should mention Scan building about £200 extra into the cost. But they do pay for other stuff, you know, what's needed, like uh, paste on the CPU and uh, maybe some cabling, some accessories that you need. So there's that in there, I don't know how much that cost, maybe 20, 30 pound. So roughly 200 pound added on to the actual component price. Anyway, my system is coming on Monday or Tuesday, the 9th, 26th. And I'll obviously do all of a series of videos on it. 